Are you looking for top quality LARPing gear? Then look no further than LARPin. LARPin is one of the UK's largest online stores. Jamie and Harriet would love to see you at their showroom in Telford. So go and take a look at what they have to offer over at www.larpin.co.uk. That's L-A-R-P-I-N-N.co.uk. And say that LARPbook sent you. It's Friday the 13th, 2018. I'm Stuart, that's Rob, Luke and Tom. And this is LARPbook. In today's show, we talk to James Snyder about his upcoming LARP pilot that he hopes will turn into a serial. We talk about Bob, and Rob is going to be donning a green cloak. Right, hi everybody, hi and welcome to the show. As before I said, I'm Stuart, that's Rob, that's Tom, that's Luke. And of course, slap bang right in the middle of there is James Snyder. How are you doing, James? Top notch, thanks for asking. <laughs> How are you doing, bud? Top Top notch, absolutely <laughs> spiffing and wonderful, um, fantastic. Now I I know that I probably got that a little bit wrong, uh, as I actually read the blurb just after I wrote that. <laughs> so it's not a LARP pilot that you're doing, is it? It's LARP yeah. characters that you decided that you really enjoyed playing and decided to make some sort of uh, serial using them or a pilot for one anyway so why don't you talk us through a little bit about what that's about yeah sure sure yeah so uh we are me and my friends are a group of independent filmmakers in saint pete florida us of a baby and uh we uh we play a game <laughs> called dystopia rising florida and so we invented this like wacky group of american characters and um we just kept coming back to them and finding new ways to like be more and more ridiculous. Uh, and we found that especially fun in a survival horror game. Okay. So we started drafting up some ideas and before we knew it, we ended up with enough content to fill out a pilot for a TV show based on those characters set in like a horror post-apocalypse world, but with a bunch of kooky rednecks. Ah, right. Okay. Uh, so... <laughs> I, I do I do like the sound of that. It's definitely the sort of thing I would watch. Uh, and I think I've watched everything on Netflix. So <laughs> Cool, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um so what do you right so at at what stage is this right now? At what stage is it? We're about to film the first episode the last weekend of this month. Mm. So we've been raising money. Yeah. Um, we just hit some goals and as far as fundraising goes, we just hit some goals. And so we're going to make the episode or we're going to film it. <laughs> and, uh, so we're going to film the last weekend of this month and the first weekend of next month. And then we're hoping to have something cut together to show folks by October. All right. Cool. Excellent. That's cool. Yeah. That's cool. So that's right. You, you start, I'm right in thinking that you started a Kickstarter and then yeah. you, you met your targets and you're now on the stretch goals, aren't you? Yeah, uh, like I said, we've been uh, making movies here in our city for a couple of years now, uh, some of us uh, for going on a decade. And so over that time, when you work in independent film, you rack up uh, a lot of favors. Mm -hmm. And so you're not always working for cash. Sometimes you're working for, hey, I'll hook you up later. Yeah. So we've been doing this for a while and we cash in every single one of them. And we said, what's the absolute minimum we can get this done for? We took that number and yeah. we crowdfunded it. Not Okay, yeah. okay, right. No, yeah, I think right. that's smart, actually, yeah. So so yeah. tell us a, a little bit about the characters then. Mm. Sure, okay. Uh, so our core cast is um, myself, my girlfriend, and my best friend. I play a sort of sawbones uh, kind of doctor named yeah. uh, Mortimer Killjoy. Um, my girlfriend plays a country and western uh, singer named Trixie Dangerous. <laughs> Uh, and my, yeah, and uh, my best friend Josh and the director, he's playing a gunslinger named Omaha Con Radical. Con so, Radical. So. Omaha Con Radical, yeah. That's, that's we went to the, I, I'm loving the names. 
We went to the Yosemite Sam School of naming characters. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, so uh, right o- already, I'm seeing you know, uh, just stupid, wacky situations in my head. You know, with those three characters alone. Um, yeah. <laughs> you know. <laughs> so we we went to Dystopia Rising, and what's fun about that game is it's a lot of it is trying to emulate like a survival horror feel. Right. And what we found at our local games is that a lot of people like to play very serious, very um, like tense characters who can revel in that horror. Yeah. And we uh, just had a lot of fun being as insane as possible, trying to get these other people to sort of like budge a little bit on that seriousness mm-hmm. and maybe yeah. meet us at a little more of the silly. And so we're sort of aiming for like an Ash versus the Evil Dead feel. Uh, yeah. <laughs> we love that show and it just yeah. got it just ended. And so we were like, man, this might be a perfect timing thing where fans of that who are looking for something else to watch. We've yeah, got yeah. something that's equally silly and hopefully it's got some spooks in it, too. Yeah, because uh, everybody, everybody else sitting around, the, you know, the, this podcast year, we always play really serious characters. Yeah, <laughs> you guys seem like a Especially real serious Tom. bunch. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. We're, we're, yeah, we're 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 very method. Uh, yeah, you know, yeah. yeah. we're yeah. yeah, totally totally method. Absolutely. Let's call it that. Yep, yeah. yep. When I play my dwarf, I live underground for the month previously. You know, so yeah. that's smart. It gives you the right color. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. And, and he's not a right, right color right now. Sets and everything. Yeah. 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 You even chop your legs off as well, don't you, Tom? Just to get the right height. And, uh, really, I, 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 I really stopped into chopping. It. I basically use the special to brush the legs. Uh, yeah. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. So my yeah. feet are where my knees will be. Yeah. 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 Wow. And that's fair. And of course, when, when, you know, Luke, when you play the Mad King George, uh, you actually go mad. I do. Well, I, I, um, I've been tested. <laughs> okay. How'd that come back? The test. Sorry. Yeah. I said, how'd that come back? The test? Would any? I'm sorry. I'm getting a little bit of interference here from America. Hello. Back to the studio. <laughs> Your <a> studio. <laughs> um. <laughs> they all came back and well they just said you know need need some work <laughs> need some okay. work need some work right so <laughs> so you're into your stretch goals try and bring it back very quickly <laughs> why oh, by, by the way I just want to say aiming from like Ash vs. Evil Dead I think that's a really nice vibe to go for so oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Like that. great yeah, yeah we, we've always loved that tone since we were kids and, and mm-hmm. like you know, so that's that's the kind of the thing we the things we like to watch. So we we're like, that's yeah. the stuff we like to make too. Do you know when you were doing the uh, the fun bit in a horror? Did you feel about as welcome as a fart in a spacesuit? Sometimes, yeah. Sometimes it's weird, um, especially when you're getting into like heavy role playing and you're like, yeah, yeah. and you're so immersed in your character. I can understand someone who like is really trying to do something like emotional, yeah, and yeah. then. Me and my group of idiot friends come along and just start <laughs> pretending to shoot ourselves in the foot and, you know, whatever, whatever the gag is, you know, and it, it, sometimes there's a little pushback. But usually the people who want you around will let you know. And those are the people you hang out with. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 You give people space if they want to be emotional. Yeah. Oddly enough, nobody wants Luke and I around. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's all we ever do is piss oh. about. Um, I, uh, I attended a LARP with uh, Stu once. <laughs> Never been again. <laughs> Still in therapy, in fact, aren't you, Tom? Yeah, 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 yeah. And to make matters worse, it was the first ever lap I went to as well. He almost put me off for life. Well, you look cute. What can I say? What uh, what games do you guys play? Is it all high fantasy stuff? I know uh, you guys probably tell your audience this all the time, but I don't know, so you can pretend like it's the first time. No, no, actually, we don't do that often. No, no we don't. Really yeah. Okay, no. so I'm, I'm actually a big fan of, of hover laps. Um, okay. so I've been playing sort of modern day hover for longer than I, I want to mention. Um, uh, <laughs> 40 which is unusual for a talk years. show. <laughs> 40 something years. Honestly, you are So, yeah, I, 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 I love the horror genre in lab. So, we've been playing sort of small little, like one, two, one shot, two shot, three shot games. And, that sounds uh, rad. And they're, oh, yeah, they're great fun. Yeah, they are. Uh, the last one we did actually wasn't modern day. It was actually a cowboy horror. Uh, part two of the series. I took Tom. Tom went there for the first 
Fred there for his first Cowboy Horror laugh, and it was an absolute blast. It was up in the in Wales. We've got like an area called Mid Wales, which is like it's like desolate. It's just hills and mountains and sheep, and not much else. Yeah, and that yeah. that was absolutely great fun. Think think Texas, but with cattle. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. Sheep. Just just tons of sheep. Actually, here's a good one. From um, somebody once calculated, and this was done by a math professor in Cardiff Uni, I think. Yeah. That if you rolled out Wales and flattened it, yeah, it's bigger than Texas. No way. Really? Yeah, so if you flatten the mountains out, <laughs> that's wild. You, you, wild, you yeah. need to get out a little bit more, Rob. <laughs> Just I, once a week, and just I think, start talking to other people. That's all you need to do. And I think, and I think, I think somebody else calculated to every Welsh person that there is, uh, there's actually around about ten to twenty sheep. So... I think you need to join Rob by getting out once a week, <laughs> just once a week. Just go to the pub. Just start talking to other people. That's all you need to do. But I don't like talking to other people. <laughs> I'm so scared. Hold me. Oh um, yeah. Well, okay. we—I mean, we've done lots. Of, actually, in fairness, since we started doing Lark Book, um, my uh, you know kind of uh, repertoire of, of of you know kind of larping has has grown exponentially because yeah. I was always very traditional with the kind of it was all always Tolkien esque in its background. It was you know because I, I was a D and D right from the time of five all the way through to sixteen, which was the earliest time you could do any kind of role playing. Yeah. Um, so I, I was very comfortable in that kind of field. I could never see Star Trek at first, Cthulhu, anything like that. There was just, I just couldn't get my head around it. But now um, I'm actually warming to it, although steampunk. <laughs> Your favorite, oh, isn't it? we are so Love gonna get you on. We have got to get <laughs> just, you on a steampunk, mate. I know, but I just can't get my head around it. It's, I just, it's, it's like, like most things, you will find me completely focused. That's all I can see is Tolkien. That's it. <laughs> um, and and I suppose that that's that's the problem. I have to broaden my horizons a little bit. Um, but you know, kind of uh, since I've been doing this though, we've been speaking to some nice people, haven't we? When it comes to steampunk, kind of, <clears throat> sorry. Um, it is. I'm not doing steampunk. No way. Steampunk. <coughs> oh, geez, terrible. Not doing that. it. <laughs> honestly, it's like Tourette's. He knows he shouldn't say it. It just blurts <coughs> out. Uh, the, the, um... Just turns his filter off. That's <laughs> all he does. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is yeah. it like? But <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I mean, you know, when when Rob and I first first started this, just as a blog and and, and what have you, uh, it's we were amazed then by the length and breadth of the different LARPs that are out there for people to consume that nobody knows yeah. about in that respect. And that's why mm -hmm. we started doing this to, to get, well, get the word out there, you know, and, and, and promote it in that, in that respect. Uh, Tom, you've, you, you've done a few different things now. Yeah. Cause yeah, you're, uh, you're relatively new to the LARP. Yeah. I'm relatively new. I think I've been doing LARPing for about probably seven years, six, seven years, something like that now. Um, yeah. and, primarily it's fantasy um but like i said i've gone on to i really enjoy the horror ones like rob um i haven't gone to as many as i would like but i really enjoy the horror ones where you are incredibly vulnerable i mean in in a normal larp you've got hit points you've got armor you're you can be a bit tanky you can be all right and someone can res you but the appeal of these horror ones is that once you're dead you're dead Unless, of course, there's some evil spell that raises you up again and you're like the monster that's going to kill all the others. Yeah. That, that, that has a strong appeal to me. The only thing that um, I haven't done yet, because I don't think I'll like it that much, it's not a genre, but a size. I've never done a huge lap. All my laps have been relatively small, maximum about 50 people, if that. Oh, uh, and I... And... And that's what I like. I like the small, story central kind of LARPs. Um, it can be in any setting. I don't really mind. Um, and uh, but the big festival kind of like LARPs, I've been mm. kind of off putting. I'm, I'm sure I'll eventually. I, I do, do you know what? I, I really feel more and more like the 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 quintessential, quintessential uh, British dad. Right. So he doesn't like big LARPs. Let's send him to a big LARP. Yeah, you know, uh, Luke doesn't yeah. like steampunk. Let's send him to steampunk. You know, I, the, you know he doesn't. Well, like I don't want to go, Dad. You can't force me. <laughs> um, 
it, oh, it is good, but yeah. I don't know. Is I, it is it over in America? Have they just got loads and loads? I mean, I suppose we we reach out to more people in America than when we do in the UK. Yeah. Strangely, um, and I think it's because the, 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 you don't probably have as many equivalents of the LARP book show over over in America. That's true. Yeah, when I was looking for places to talk to, you guys were kind of high on the list so this is cool to be here so i think you're right i think we the more markets here are more niche for it you know like mm-hmm. you find these pockets that have like these cool larps but they're more like you were saying like the smaller size and even like the game i go to i think we average about 100 players a game mm-hmm. so it's it's not like huge but it's it's big but sometimes mm-hmm. they're small sometimes they're personal but then you can go to like conventions and you can get these one shots that are uh significantly smaller than that yeah. I my experience with yeah. them has been very like tangential from people I've met and they say, oh, you've done this thing before. Come try my game. And then that's mm-hmm. when I'll go check mm-hmm. out a new thing. Yeah. So I think there can be something said to go like you were saying, going to an event that you maybe aren't interested in might make you surprised at yeah. what you'll dig. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I know that I, mind you, I can understand what Tom was saying about going to those the big the bigger events. And I won't name any because there are so many of the, the really big ones where you've got thousands of people. I mean, the one thing that I did find when I first went to a very big final battle was having like two and a half thousand people in front of you yeah. on the final battle. That's a bit scary, um, yeah. which you, you don't get at a normal smaller lot, but no. you are not part of the story. But that level of immersion has got to be so real. Yeah, like you know what uh, I mean. Just untrue. It's oh, scary yeah. as anything. It really. See, is. For me, um, when I go to a lab, I do it for the story, and I would like. So, if I were to ever to go to a big lab, yeah. the idea thing for me would be, forget all the previous days, last day battle, go for that one day and get in the battle, done, get my fill, go home. That sounds yeah, great. Yeah, yeah. Because all the rest are normally just like socializing slash drinking slash yeah. taking the piss and stuff like that, and I go to a lab to lap. So I would just wait, end of day, get in that battle, ah! Actually, and uh, then go home. Yeah, Pippa's just mentioned in the chat that you should come to CP, and like we we are kind of agreeing with him. Yeah, if there was a big lap to go to, it will be CP. Yeah, CP just so you know, just, just so you know, James, uh, CP is curious pastime. They're they're one of the top, one of the three largest laps in the UK. Cool. Uh, Stuart and I have been going for a few years now, and Pippa, who's the trash room, she's a big fan, and it's it's a it's a large large scale. It's about nine hundred players of a fantasy lap, and it's it, it's a really nice sort of game structure and yeah. atmosphere, and there's always lots going on. Yeah, and uh, we're, we're we're dragging Luke uh, along to this August game as well. Uh, so uh, and and his family, in fact, his entire family is coming along to sit to this one. So uh, oh, all yeah. eighty nine of them. <laughs> eighty nine. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> Or just tell catering. Well, your tent's your tent's big enough, so that's all right. I mean, well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Funny enough, Stu, I think your pop-up tent will be big enough. That thing's huge. <laughs> I know for what it is, definitely it was it's bonkers. Uh, if if you if you ever look on our, our, our YouTube uh, channel, I I bought a uh, an inflatable tent right, because <laughs> basically I can't be asked to. <laughs> that's, a, that's a bounce castle, man. Yeah. That, that's a bouncy castle. That's not. <laughs> bounce castle. Yes, James. That's not. <laughs> you got tricked, man. <laughs> well, it's it's very comfortable. Oh, Jake. You know. <laughs> I bet it is actually. It's, it's a bounce castle is basically a giant air mattress. So yeah. Do you know basically, what? Basically, when you start, over are there balls in it? Your little turrets <laughs> come up. Don't they, Stu? That's about... Do you know what? Say, Stu, what do you want? <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what? I I don't know why I didn't think of that anyway. Why the hell didn't I just buy an inflatable it's castle? Yes. Yeah. Need to do a bit of a target. He wakes up in the, the morning t- and his head comes out of a pile of balls. Yeah. 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 that's his preference and I don't think you have any rights to talk to him about that you can't judge him no no judgement here man I'm, sounds I'm awesome sounds like a good time right. time is entirely up to him we, we are not judgmental here if he wants to face down oh, in a pile oh, of balls I, that's his own own hey, decision yes we are judgmental don't be wrong you, you are Tom in the morning and to see the head popping up from a pile of balls yeah, just, just, just that just that <laughs> <laughs> I do like the concept of the inflatable castle, though. Yeah, that would be... That, do you know what? Absolutely. Why the hell didn't I think of that? That would be brilliant. Sure, man. I want you to get a puncture, so halfway through the night, all I can hear is... <laughs> <laughs> For God's sake, stay up! Or just... Or just... 
Oh. See, he bought an inflatable tent, and I bought a bigger canvas tent. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, bigger, bigger being the operative word. Em- was it emperor tent? It's an emperor that it's uh, six meter. It's an oval, six meter by four meter, and three meters in height. And it <laughs> and and it comes with butlers and a side entrance. Yeah, well, <laughs> I've got a sign up for it called Bell End. <laughs> <laughs> Then I'm just seeing if anybody I've asked I have asked uh, if if anybody's got any questions for James while yeah. we're oh, just cool. well while we're just having laugh you know please post yeah. them up here uh, and we'll have you uh, because there's only so many questions we can ever think of uh, in that sure. respect yeah. uh, and then it digresses into us just taking the Mickey out of one another. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I'm, also, I'm also hoping for questions. Going, James, quick, quick, yeah, I know you're making a pilot now. Uh, what, 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 what are you hoping the next step will be? Uh, the, I'm, I'm already beginning plans to, uh, build a writing room to map out the rest of my season. Uh, yeah. usually when you're trying to like sell a TV show, you want to have that stuff. Um, uh, what I'm going to do is I think, uh, I'm going to have some fun with it. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to build rules for all the characters. Mm-hmm. And then I'm going to basically pass the rules out to my friends who I play like D and D or tabletop games with and stuff. And my writing friends and say, I basically want you to write me an episode of a D&D session, and we're going to sit at the table for the writing room and play it like a tabletop game. Oh, yeah. Oh. All right, okay. So, so, that, that will get the sort of the right vibe through from, from the laughing group, yeah. Yeah, so yeah, it's yeah. going to be a lot of fun. I, I've got some good GMs who are excited to write some content with me, and uh, we're going to have some sillies along the way. <laughs> well, we played D&D for the first time in many years, didn't we, Stu? Oh. Last weekend. Oh. <laughs> yeah. And um, when Stu gets very tired, guess what he tries to do with himself? Oh he God. tries to get himself killed. Ah. <laughs> so that's his <laughs> way out. So we saw him trying to literally about twelve o'clock, this was him. <laughs> and they were saying, Stu, what do you want to do? And he would just he'd have a row with anyone. <laughs> we even st- he'd try to pick on people just to get himself killed. And it wasn't because he was genuinely that was what his character was. He was just sure. bored, really tired, and wanted to go to bed. That's what it was. <laughs> so we had to we had to abandon everything until the following day and finish it off because uh, otherwise we would never have survived anything because someone wanted to go and kill themselves because they were tired. <laughs> He gets a tantrum as well. Look, I'd fallen asleep three times on the GM. I, mean... I was teabagging a dragon. You don't do that without backup. <laughs> Bad Stuart. I really was. I was just like, oh, I just want to go to bed. I just want to go to bed. Look, what, what can I do to get out of this? I know. It's just be a t- what? Yeah. <laughs> um, Pippa's was. brought out a good question, by the way. She said, "What does James think about things like boffer games in the USA?" Yeah, that's just. Uh, I'm I'm down with it, man. I I like them. Uh, mm-hmm. To me, the stuff that gets uh, me really into it tends to be the narrative-driven stuff. Like I like to role play. I like to I like to think of ways to be funny in a situation. Like that's the stuff that makes me really excited. But I will say, my favorite moments at uh, dystopia rising war um when it's like late at night and you're heavy into stick jocking because that's what you've got to do to survive and there are these moments that you the sense of self sort of evaporates and you lose the wall between you and your character and you just mm. start thinking like your character because you don't want to die and so you're just truly role playing so that stuff can be super fun and i think the stick jocking and the and the, the buffer fighting is the way to kind of shortcut to that Okay, dokie. Um, that's that's a new term. Yeah. New term for me. Stick yeah. jocking. I have Explain. no idea what that means. It mm. sounds. Oh, yeah. stick stick jocks. Um, that's what I, me, and people that I larp with have tended to refer to people who only like the fighting. Mm-hmm. Like so, oh, so we so you go yeah, to yeah. some larps and it's not really a larp so much as it is just, just a fight. stick jock tournament. Like yeah. it's just kids fighting and stuff, and that can be fun. And I've had a lot of yeah. fun at games like that, but. Um, 
when yeah so that's like the term for people who just like to fight we tend to call them stick jocks I so like I, ah, I like it i did not know, like like know you had that I, that's a new one thank you're gonna you. have to steal that and say it's our creation you don't mind do it do, you? do it yeah, yeah please yeah, yeah because yeah. no no nobody ever watches the show so sorry. no one listens anyway <laughs> uh so your secret's safe with us yeah. Um, yeah, please uh, i don't want to get beat up by a bunch of stick jocks that's the most <laughs> very simple thing well is. don't worry you won't yeah and yeah. Um, uh, just yeah. uh, just a very quick one from from, from Ram. Uh, he said, yeah. "Just want to go bed." This seems like a running theme. When you guys went to bed, you missed a night battle. Yes, we did. Uh, Rob and I were just tired. We went to bed, and a massive battle happened all around our tents. Uh, <laughs> yes, it was no all around our tents. I got up in the morning. I started to look at my tent. This was a, a, a Nerf um, get, uh, combat game. Um, yeah, yeah. Games. yeah. And I looked around my tent thinking, why are there nerf darts all on my tent? I mean, there was the literally hundreds, Everywhere. hundreds yeah. of nerf darts all over Rob's tent. <laughs> of course, yeah. I immediately thought, fuck, they hate Rob. There's <laughs> <laughs> <It's> almost <laughs> guns for you, man. Away from that. Yeah. Well, your inflatable castle just literally boned them all just off, points. obviously. She like, yeah, she like yeah. It. Yeah. Just boins it all off. It's own shields, mate. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Bouncy shield. Right, okay. Well, that's yeah, what uh, you want to get, isn't it? Every time you go there, you want to get an inflatable that's like a big nerf gun. <laughs> you'll fit in yeah exactly sounds like a plan seeing that now right pip has got another question i do love it when 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 other questions come up uh so uh also like to know what james thinks on the debate that seems to be going on in america that it should be down to the player when their character dies and that permanent Ooh. player death should not be a thing me personally not for it i think if death is death is death is death End of, you're dead. Perhaps the rest of us can, can chime in on that. I have opinions. I'm formulating <laughs> them. Because uh, I feel okay. ways about it. I think that it could hurt immersion if there's no real sense of danger. Yeah. But I do think if you have a small, tight-knit group and you were to <clears> do an ongoing LARP, like something more akin to like a D&D campaign... I think if you guys want to talk about where to take that story and leave it up to each individual player to decide when they die, I think if you guys are playing a game like that where you can collaboratively just storytell and make it an interactive game, then like, yeah, who cares? Make, make that rule for your own table or for your own group. But yeah. I think as far as like a big game goes, yeah, you, you probably just can't do away with the death because then the game aspect of it starts to lose its meaning a little bit yeah yeah so I, I think i think there should be i, th I there should be death i think yeah. if you yeah. are reckless with your character because when you think about it if you were going to go into something Stu. like a final battle <laughs> yeah Stuart's really good at it uh in fact uh, <laughs> well, 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 i was well, with well, Stuart well, the one well, time well, the ones he's reckless with they always survive it's the serious ones that always die do, do you know what <laughs> yeah, like, you're right. That's true, yeah, that is, because true. he took no damage. We were, imagine this, we were in front of a dragon who sat there and we were trying to talk to it. And and it said, if you want to talk to me and if you want to trade, you have to take all of your clothes off, right? Put all your weapons down onto the floor and then we'll talk, right? No one in their right mind would want to do that for whatever reason in front of a dragon. He starts stripping off. Hell yeah, my man. And, oh, uh, and, don't help him. You. and not just the character. And, he, yeah. and, 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 the, and the dragon just thought, oh, for God's sake, I'll leave him alone. There's no point. Going to, there's yeah. madness, and then yeah, there's him, and he's got a mezzanine. Time mezzanine. served. Honestly. <laughs> but, I mean, enough, man. He's, he, uh, he actually he badmouthed a, a, a mage when we were live role-playing at the gathering when he told him to hold his tongue, so he did, and he went, oh, I'm not sure for exactly what's going to happen here. And then he got mage-bolted. Right, um, that's that was the other time you got killed. You've mugged people. We've been, yeah. Every time I've been with you, I've died. You sound like my kind of player, my man. <laughs> yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah. Like, it, like, yeah, yeah. If, you there's, happen if there's some, yeah. if there's some way to create chaos, I will find it. It's as simple as that. You know, it's yeah. uh, and that's it usually just by turning up. Um, <laughs> you know, um, okay, it's good. You're about to death thing because people just added a bit more onto that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> right. 
it wasn't that one I wanted to put on the screen. So Pippa has got a, I've got a point. She says, well, a lot of people are saying that having permanent death in a game stops the players getting fully invested in their characters. I, th I think that's true. But then you got a flip side of that as well is that if you never have any character death, then people get overconfidence and mm. you lose some of what I would class. Yeah. Well, it's a, st a strange term, but the reality too, I think you've got to believe that you're there. And you're yeah. not just going to run into every single situation and start fighting. Yeah. There has to be consequences. Yeah. And if you um, can't die, then no one's going to take it serious. I mean, I mean, to, to be honest with you, the, the, the whole, um, I, I'm, I'm more invested in my character yeah. if it That's what can I was... die. Mm, yeah, if, yeah. if it was immortal i'd be like yeah whatever yeah, you know yeah you know and i'd, I'd, I'd probably be even fucking crazier than i am uh <laughs> in in a, in a I, lap and I, I just wade into everything i think that's possible <laughs> <laughs> so you know to, to me yeah if if there's some mortality to mm. that character then i'm gonna do my damnedest to hold on to it unless i'm bored with it and then i'm just gonna be stupid yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's entirely my choice. Um, and now, uh, of course, the person we can't pronounce the name of. Uh, here, uh, here's a hot potato. Uh, Boffer noodle versus injected foam latex. Plastitipitated phone. There's no way I can say that. Uh, the other one. Yeah. <laughs> the, other the other way. One. The way yeah. it actually works. Yeah. yeah. The, okay, so that's, yeah, that's I mean, definitely an American lab question. Yeah. Just to let you know, James, uh, Boffer lab. As in, sort of buffer swords. The they they're, they're really rare. In the UK. Very rare. well, yeah. Oh, really? I would I would say non-existent, not just rare, yeah. non-existent. Um, yeah. We we are very lucky over here having some incredibly good manufacturers mm. uh, of uh, well, movie bloody quality swords yeah. and props. I'll I'll be honest with you. In fact, I know I know of a few companies over over here. That have produced swords and yeah. things like that for movies, yeah. uh, you know, because they look so bloody good. And of course, and they usually tell them given, I'd love a sponsor. Yeah, they 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 usually they usually given uh, to actors that aren't very good uh, yeah. <laughs> with them. So you know, that sounded bit to that too. What, so what's that, James? I said I'd love a sponsor, so if they want to send us a package, I'm down for that. <laughs> well, hey, we, you, we could use a yeah. ton of weapons, so that'd you, be great. Yeah. You never know. Yeah, you yeah. never know. <laughs> um, yeah, I, you see it a lot here. It's really common here. I'd say it's probably the most common. I was surprised when I started going to uh, DR that some of that so many people had like really high quality stuff. Um, a lot of these players start spending extra money to get like nice gear. I sort of think of them like training wheels, like it's what you learn on. And then eventually you just go like when you do get invested in that character, you go, I'm going to buy yeah. some dope stuff for mm -hmm. this character. And that's when you start spending money on the yeah, good yeah. gear that you get. Do you think that's what Pip is talking about? That if you are going to get immersion, if you're going to get sign on, that there has to be that continuity. So if there's death all the time, then people just go, do you know what? What's the point? Yeah, and then they, and you know, and, and I, I can kind of see that flip side where I think um, Laurie and Trust do it, don't they? Where they have um, almost like a, a, a contract where you can't die for the first like night and a half or something like that. Um, that's and, smart. Yeah, and and basically, if your character dies for whatever reason, it just regenerates after about an hour. Yeah. And, and I thought that was quite a good um, a, a good thing. But I, I do see where Pippa's coming from because I think it's a very fine balance. But if you've got someone who's reckless, I think they need to be bought in because that can ruin what's going on. Um, Stuart is just. Well, he's just waving because he's mad. Um, but it's you know kind of, uh, and I do I do think that there has to be that control. But there again, that's good. That's good management of the whole system, isn't it? Really, when you think about it. Yeah, it's it's a ritual of peace or something. A while of you. Ritual of yeah, peace. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's something, it. something like that. Yeah. They, they call it, where where literally you cannot die for the first day and a half. <clears throat> uh, so so you, that's when I cause real chaos because uh, I can't die. Uh, but after that, after that time, uh, you know, the ritual of peace is broken because of something's happened or, or what have you. You know, someone took the light bulb out of the stone or whatever it was. And um, and then people can actually die from that point forward. Um, but it's a good it's a good idea. And I can I, I and I can see because Pippa was saying, yeah, that's exactly uh, what she was getting at, Luke, um, that if there's a lot. If, OK, if there's a lot of death. 
<laughs> right from the get go, then, then yeah, I mean, then then you're basically rolling a character to die, and mm. then having your real one in reserve. You know. Yeah. Um, then again, some of that has to go down to the planners as well. Yeah. Mm. They have. Yeah, you have a... control of the monsters and the fight. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. yeah, but of course, I'm, so it has I'm, to be. I mean, you you know, you've you've played in a few laps now. It doesn't matter how well you plan, the players will screw that up on first contact. Oh yeah, I, I'm just suggesting that you know, as as a planner, you have to be quite dynamic and flexible with monsters and stuff, and yeah. you don't want to send. All right, well, we'll send all these in and we'll kill one or two, you know, or, or something like that. You got to be kind of like it, it's entirely up to the planners on how much danger there's there's going to be, and if they yeah. if the group just barely survives the last attack yeah and you already planned a second wave well a smart planner will go okay let them recover their wounds don't send it in if someone who's yeah. stuck with the thing they'd send another one it could ruin here's, the whole here's a really good one on 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 that line from the person that we can't pronounce the name of elan um, it's yeah elan. Elan. Is, is it yeah, okay yeah. right elan. um we we have tried dealing with the feeling of lacking threat by giving out permanent injuries and disabilities if your mm. character was badly injured. I like that idea. That's I like that idea a lot. What do you yeah, mean, like a paladin with a bad back? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's taken from board of... games, a lot of board games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I like that. Like... Certain games have, like, delusions and things that you'll have that's to grapple right, with. Yeah. Yes. As you yeah, 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 yeah. The only downside I would see about that is to say you go down and, I don't know, you got a gammy leg or something. Or something. Well, you'd have to constantly role-play yeah, that yeah. consistently yeah, yeah. throughout an entire weekend. And remember, yeah, yeah. you've got that gammy leg. And we all know in the heat of the battle, you can forget stuff. Oh, I, a, oh, I forget my name. Um, well, there you go. <laughs> there you so, go. That, yeah. so, and in addition, do you really want to go around the whole weekend hobbling along? It'll be oh, so well, it'd have to be something along get, the lines. Don't get in a fight then. Yeah, but yeah. the point uh, if it's so Throw annoying, you would go. Well, I may as well <laughs> die. It'd be better if I died. Actually, I, I'm going to counter that a little bit, Tom, because mm -hmm. one of the most sort of scary and the most immersed games I went to was quite a few years ago. It was a horror game, and my character got injured quite early on. Mm hmm. And couldn't walk. <laughs> oh, God. Are you, I, I, Are you sure that just wasn't? Yeah. I, 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 I mean. No, it wasn't me looking for an easy night. So I had to be. I had to, be play, I had to play role play this horrible injury, where I, I from a sofa, mm. and there were people coming to sort of look after me and help me. Mm. Then bad things started to happen. Then I go, I can't get out of here. I'm stuck. And yeah. then people coming to help me, going, What do we do? He's stuck. <laughs> that, that that sounds like my perfect LARP. Yeah, yeah, you sit in that settee. We'll keep yeah. bringing you tea and biscuits. Brilliant. Yeah. See, I think that's but like fine. A good but for... designer could make it like a tower defense game at that point. Yes. That you have to guard <laughs> this guy if you yeah. want him to live, and I'm going to send waves at you. Yeah, yeah. and it was, it was really good because they, they took full advantage of it. And at some point, it becomes a more question too. First wave. Let's bail on him. I mean, for a <laughs> yeah, horror LARP. <laughs> I think this, the, the uh, you know like the um, disabilities and, and 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 stuff like that that you get is fine because in a horror lab, you're most of the time you're not expected to survive, you know yeah. it, it, it's and it's kind it's, of they, yeah. It's ninety nine percent of the time it is just one thing. What, what I'm talking about is an event where they carry on, maybe like a festival sure. one or something yeah. where the story carries on. Well, imagine you get injured and you got to carry on with the story and the story of the next weekend, the next weekend after that, next day, next yeah. day. That can be considerably annoying. That can be that can kill the entire fun out of it. Yeah, but, and it probably would have been better to die and just re-roll another character. But Tom, That's then, really dark, then, Tom. then, then you use the 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 uh, the Monty Python card of saying I got better I got better <laughs> <laughs> I think the question has to be that Tom you're always talking about immersion right I do like immersion yes right, okay so if your dwarf died in its first day would you shave your beard Ooh. if there was a razor yes but I can quite easily play another character with a beard <laughs> looking exactly the same <laughs> looking exactly the same well, just slight different art well I stripe in it yeah. One, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Just like one stripe down the side. Just I'm a slight, different yeah. guy now. Slight hair. <laughs> yeah, just plait some of it on the one yeah. side. Look yeah. at me, Luke. Luke, don't, don't, 
don't forget that in in the L- L- Lorien Trust games, in the Gathering games, right, uh, the character that got mage bolted, Silent Bob, amazingly, had the same armor. Yeah. Who knew? Who knew? <laughs> My new character that that, that we rolled, because basically I'd gotten killed because I was a smart ass. Uh, <laughs> you know, yeah. I, we decided that uh, my character would be a deaf mute. Uh, so <laughs> can't, can't 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 talk, can't hear. Uh, but amazingly, had the same outfit as the guy that just died. Yeah. Well, you're going to yeah. have to, aren't you? Yeah. I mean, I can understand another reason for why they don't want the death is you spent all this money on armor and equipment yeah. for one character because you're not rich. You can only, you know, you build up over time. Right. Yeah. And they die, and you're like, well, all this armor is just specifically for one character. I've spent all this. I want to use it. I want to play the character this was all built for. Interesting. Elan said that DR. Uh, solved this nicely by all the players actually playing zombies, yeah. <laughs> um, which I think is is quite good. Now I've seen that in that kind of zombie like when they take over cities, don't they? And they have to get from yeah, A to B. Yeah. And then if you get hit, then you you become a zombie. Although having said that, we have got to do one of those. I I think we got to do one of those. I, I think because I would I would actually I would learn how to run just so I could run faster than Rob. <laughs> Ooh, and then I'd have to dump stick. him, I I'd, and him. I would, and, and yeah. then I'd basically, I'd just push him out. So, I, and I'd, I'd be the total mercenary. I'd have to be. That's that's what I'd, I'd just this kind of uh, killer instinct. Where, you know, I've got no loyalty at all. No, I've just got, exactly. I've got to survive. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm a great sprinter. I'm not good over distance, but as long as I can <laughs> out, out sprint that first hundred meters, right? Yeah, yeah, and yeah. Rob. You're yeah. fine. That's fine, mate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The only, the only thing Rob will probably be able to have is he'll be able to, to boomerang the bloody walking stick in between my legs. That's, that's his probably yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> don't worry. <laughs> I'll help it. you until basically it doesn't suit me anymore. <laughs> and then I'll push you around. <laughs> Till it becomes slightly inconvenient. You know? Yeah. 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 Until, yeah. until yeah. yeah, until like, no, yeah. bye-bye. <laughs> no, no, no. That's right. They're all coming now. Yeah. I play it total so, coward, man. I run away from every threat. Mm-hmm. It has become a gag now. I hide me <laughs> and I look like a cartoon character and then I fire my gun over my shoulder wildly as I run away. <laughs> Not <laughs> hitting anyone. Is there friend yeah. fire? That's the idea. I, there I've should be. There, you, it's, you should yeah. take that damage, but people don't always. No. <laughs> I'll tell you that for real. Yeah. Pippa bought something out. She said, characters with quirks can be great to play, although in one law I played, we had a scout who was a mute, and their sign languages were awful, so we never knew what monsters were about to give us a mauling. Oh, <laughs> can you imagine that? that? Yeah, that'd be wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. Can What's can happening, say, Flippy? Can I just say, <laughs> if, if you're looking to do a LARP, if you're looking to create a character, never in a million years do a mute someone who can't talk yeah. it is the worst oh. thing you could possibly unless you're stew it's yeah. the worst <laughs> yeah. thing you could possibly do but, so that i played a bard who could only sing what See, was that's going different, on though. That's fun and that's we sick. were we were in a ditch and a whole party of orcs came past and i just sang christ i hope they don't <laughs> see us and we got kicked Honestly, but you could see all the other people sat there in the party going, well, I don't know what we thought was actually going to happen here. Uh, we should have seen that really coming. Just yep. playing his character. And we all died horribly. But the orcs sat there and just wet themselves because they just didn't think I'd do it. I'll be honest with you, neither did I at first. I'm, so, I'm oh, sorry, I'm just, just being reminded, Luke, of that game we played up in, in that uh, St. Saint, Bravels. Saint yeah, St. Bravels. We the one, we were hiding quite well, and the one oh, yeah. the one lad was across the way hiding in what he thought were trees, but he was backlit by a street lamp, so he was like, <laughs> and, big beautiful silhouette, and 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 I looked across and I went, huh? like this. Luke went, what? Well, I went. And I just pointed in that direction. He went, oh, my God. <laughs> and that was it. So all you could we... see was this man going like this, and he thought he was hiding in a bush, but everyone could see him. It was genius. And then he and I were holding each other because we started crying, and then we, we couldn't stop laughing. And it was so bad that by the time the enemy found us, we were useless because we just we were suddenly going, just look at him. <laughs> look at him. <laughs> look at that. <laughs> we were oh, useless. God. We couldn't do anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We 
<laughs> yeah, they just they just basically just left us alone. It was a, a probably a genius yeah, plan. It was, it was um, horrendous. But but Ram Ram is bringing up a couple of things. Went to a pirate yes. blarp fest where characters caught by the red coats cut off limbs so organizers had peg legs larp safe hook hands that sort of thing yeah, yeah, and if yeah, caught right. stealing again the characters got hung uh player had to do basically one hour of crewing then return <laughs> as a crew member of the pirate crew that's and nice that's, that's pretty good, pretty good idea. Yeah, talking of fun. bob by the way we we brand people but we Jeez. do it safely we get pig skin and we put it onto the back, with, obviously with lots of other things as, yeah. as well. But basically, if you brand pigskin, it sounds oh, yeah. exactly the same as if you were branding proper skin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if you do it properly, uh, and we've got a Bob brand, and basically we're going to do that. And, and I saw it done once, and it is you sit and you go, oh, that's going to leave a bruise, surely. Um, <laughs> but it's, it's actually really safe what they do, but you have to get the right people with it. I wouldn't recommend yeah. you do this at all unless that you've got all the it. So but just, it, it was so, very so, well done. So basically all the children then? All the children. <laughs> yeah. the children all the time. My kids brand each other all the time. They're, they're terrible. <laughs> um, I them, but now they just yeah, want to stop. Yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's it was very effective, but it was it was do- well, it was done properly. But it, you know, when you because I hadn't seen it before the first time, you know how you yeah, do. Yeah. Yeah, I stick my health and safety consultant's head on, and <laughs> I'm just going. Oh, you doing what with what now? <laughs> oh no, no, don't do that again. No. <laughs> um, I, there again, we've got a fire breather, and that was yeah. pretty horrific. Yeah, I, I just want to say hi to Greg. Hi, Greg. How's things, mate? Uh, there we go. Uh, I my Pippa Ghost played a character that was incredibly short-sighted, as in practically myopic. Uh, attack came into the camp with a <laughs> attack came into the camp with a goblin bomb. I turned around to run and ran face first into a tree. Everyone thought it was role playing. I ever thought it was role playing it, but nope. I just forgot that there was a <laughs> that there was one in the actual camp <laughs> and ran <laughs> full pelt into the tree. Oh, that shit's fun. Oh, see, like this weird. is like confessions, isn't it? Has yeah. anyone else got any confessions? Yeah. Come on, James, you've bring, got to have a few. Bring them on. on. Come on. What have you done that's that's that you've you've kind of managed to blag, but it was really you screwing yeah. up? Yeah. Oh man, I so there were so guys. many. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say it's sort of my whole character shtick, man. It's yeah. like I, I, it's. And I'm an idiot, so it works really well for me. Uh, there, uh, what I do have more of is I actually have good stories where people don't trust me in moments when I'm trying to be helpful because I'm such an idiot. Yeah. So there was this time that uh, some uh, some monsters had locked down a, a camp, and it was like this outcropping in the woods, and there were only a couple paths. And so there's some cool level design on it, too. And um, they were sort of like blockading one of the entrances, so I just cut through the trees and went through the woods and there were pe- players on the ground bleeding out and i was like hey y'all come on with me let's get out of here and they were like no no, <laughs> no. So, and then i was like okay well i'm not gonna get dead see y'all later and then i just dipped back into the woods and you know tried not to trip over trees and stuff but but it falls and blunders that stuff happens constantly <laughs> <laughs> Oh, fantastic. I've done a couple of uh, falling on deceptively flat and unimpeding ground, uh, when especially when you're running away and you've just taken an absolute pisser, let's face it. And you, you try, because, I mean, I, I used to have a character called Van Clinken who used to wear massive plate mail armour but was a scout. Um, and, we, you know, whenever we'd, we'd go out and the thing got really heavy and, and you'd be going trudging through a forest and not everyone could hear you. And then you'd sit there and you'd, you'd only have the one line. That's all you needed to say. It was a plot thickener. And you'd sit there and go, uh, I've been told to tell you that the gods want you to go over there. That's where the plot is. And just before you'd sit there and you go, oh, I just want to, Hoo-ah! and then you'd be on the floor face down. And they go, Did anyone, did you hear that? <laughs> <laughs> and I couldn't get back up again because my bloody armour was too heavy. So I was suddenly going, oh, yeah! you just hear this kind of arm like, rising into the air. Just ridiculous. Like a turtle on its back. <laughs> well, yeah, is a good way of putting it. Because yeah. once It's like trying to go into the toilet in full mail, isn't oh, it? That's just like it. something you should never try. Just just literally go to the toilet in. Oh, you just yeah. need to wet yourself, don't you? And hope that <laughs> over the weekend it doesn't start to smell too bad. <laughs> Is that another uh, confession? 
We, we have <laughs> a thought of a good one. Yeah. If you guys want it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. cool. Let's do that. Yeah, Rian. Rian. She. She did. She did. I remember this. She did run straight into Rob's shield, but in my defense, my monster mask slipped. <laughs> Lol. Well, I want to see where you were going. <laughs> Rian's quite petite. Yeah. Uh, Pippa said. She said another stupid thing I did was I went to bed, crawled into my tent, and fell asleep wearing full armor, but I could barely move in. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh dear. Well, how drunk have you got to be to go? Do you know what? I'll just sleep where I am. Well, how about the tomorrow morning problem? <laughs> yeah. How about the guy that was half in, half out of the toilet in the one bloody uh, game that we, that we went to? He was he, he just slept like that. <laughs> Oh, God. Oh, I did see I did see at the gathering many years back a guy got so paralytic that he couldn't get into his tent so he fell on it and then the following <laughs> morning he just literally kind of wrapped himself in his fly sheet. <laughs> yeah. Cool. He was just cool. Yeah. Run. Oh wow, that's uh... a <laughs> that's that's a level of drunk in it, fair play. Oh, oh I'll tell you, uh, oh. that is is just uh... <laughs> Pippa saying Luke, I was very drunk. Uh no excuses, Pippa. <laughs> Uh, we will be talking about this at CP uh, <laughs> over, yeah. a, over a beer. Over a beer. We, will be talking, we will all be talking about this at the, at the, at the next next year's pastime prepared in the Crimson Moon, um, and, and I still got one of Luke's tabs. Me you too. Yeah, I need that tab back. You can't keep on spending on it. Pair of buggers. <laughs> we we are still this, trying this... to pay off the last bill. We have this, this 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 wonderful wonderful thing, James. Uh, the company <clears throat> company of you called Crimson Moon. They do in character bars for events. So it doesn't matter if it's sci-fi, they'll make the bar look like that. If it's fantasy, Ooh, they'll make okay. the bar look like that. Horror, whatever, right? They will make it look that that way, mm-hmm. right? That's awesome. And they'll and yeah. they'll theme themselves as well, and anybody working you know with them. So it's it's they do a really good job. But they stupidly uh, decided to open up a tab system. So we all have these sort of. <laughs> mine somewhere uh, in fact here's here's mine mine right by here nobody use this number because you can't they know it's me right we we have these the, the, these oh. things you know with it with it with a quick number flash there right uh, <laughs> there's um, no money that's why you have to use mine you git and stupidly <laughs> stupidly they gave rob and i uh, luke's spare one at the one event cool. so we used it <laughs> <laughs> As, well, yeah. it's it's what friends do, right? I mean, yeah. that's that's what I tried to explain to Luke anyway. I'm going to have to sell one of the children again. <laughs> <laughs> Another one? <Yeah. laughs> I had seven at one point. But yeah. two now. <laughs> so, have we got any any more questions for James? Yeah. <laughs> Although anything can... about anything about James's films or is actually James? A good question would be sort of where can people find more about you, your work and yeah, how to, how to follow sure. what you're doing. Sure, we've uh, we've still got two days left on our Kickstarter. So if anyone yep. likes what we're doing and they want to chip in and help out and pay or help us pay our crew a little extra, you can check us out on Kickstarter at American Wasteland. Yeah. Um, just search it; I'm sure it'll come up. I, I, and that's, I, no, there's, I'd like to add an addendum to that because people will start putting in American Wasteland. It's not; you lose the A off the front, so it's American. All right, it's American, American wasteland. wasteland. All right. Yeah, you got to say it with the accent. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I was just about to say so. Thank you. Or you can uh, check us out on Facebook at American Wasteland as well. Brilliant. Yeah, absolutely. Cool. And yeah, actually, you're on Facebook as well as Good Enough Films as well, I believe. So there's yeah, there's, there's that's the production house. Everything that's going on. <laughs> Yeah, there is is there as well? So yeah, I'm gonna uh, get those links in the show notes for you as well, James. Cool, yeah, I'd appreciate yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, we got a short film coming out soon uh, mm-hmm. called Parallel One yeah. um, that we just produced a couple months ago, and then this is our next big project. So, oh, so I think you missed out there, James. You said you got a, uh, got a new short film coming out. Did you enjoy it? Uh, yeah, it was a it was a good time, man. <laughs> no, that was the pun. Oh, I have a short film coming out. Look, if I've got to explain this, they're not funny after that. Hey, that ain't on me, my man. I'm just trying to help. <laughs> I'll yes and all day long, but. <laughs> oh, you're, you're you're definitely gonna have to come over to the UK, mate, because we, I, I think we'd have, we'd, we'd have a blast together. To be honest with you, I think uh, I think we would. If you guys <laughs> are ever uh, in the states, let me know. We'll play some games. Oh, yeah. we, we'll have to because I think you'll ride up with our street. Although we'd probably get you killed pretty quickly. <laughs> hey, I think cool. Probably be the best the five better. minutes we've ever had. 
<laughs> exactly. I'm gonna run away. I promise you. <laughs> run away. Run fast. Run hard. <laughs> Y'all have fun. <laughs> Y'all have fun now. <laughs> cool yeah no way so so stick around james if you want to as well not a problem yeah uh well, yes. we, we, we're just gonna be talking about some of the other things that, that are coming up um soon uh in in this country really uh so uh the first one up of course is is uh, luke's baby luke and ellie's baby uh which is uh brotherhood of the black which is of course a pirate uh well not really a larp it's a larp slash cosplay slash reenactment slash let's just do what the hell we like uh event and that is on the 10th and 12th of august 2018 at lanreichwau nelson, nelson. Uh, in <laughs> south, <laughs> south, south wales uk <laughs> uh we'll have a link up uh, as well to the website but it's easily defined uh, just put brotherhood hyphen of hyphen the hyphen black.co.uk just as long as you get the hyphens in there i'm sure it'll be fine uh, i actually did a search for bob pirate festival and it came up so <laughs> that's exactly what I, I i searched for to find the link um uh rob you put up as well uh the a <laughs> I, you know, I, I i wish we could go along to this mate I, I really do the 80s the 80s post-apocalyptic madness which is on august 4th that's, to the 5th yes. yeah, yeah, just, that's gideon it, isn't it James yeah, is there, mate. Yeah. Yeah, that, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. time yeah i'll, yeah, I'll tell you about that one then so that's uh gideon and that's we're taking over the underground tunnels beneath Fort Whitley in Portsmouth, which is a Napoleonic so... fort. And it's a party to celebrate the end of the world, only it's all being done in, this, in the sort of 80s punk style, 80s new romantic style. Oh, I can't wait. Um, all of my clothes are now like relevant. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, you, can, you, you can get those can flares out again. Put it all back yeah, on now. Yeah, I'll get my mullet out and everything. <laughs> I mean, I mean, let's be honest. If nothing else, that's going to be a crazy blast, isn't it? Yeah, it's not we've, just. We've got a DJ arranged who's looking for um, suggestions. Oh, it would just Erasure. Yeah, Human League. Erasure. Yep. I mean, just just go and search for now. That's what I call the eighties, uh, oh. and, and you're done. <laughs> that's all you need to do: just press play, walk away, walk away. Yeah. I, I, threat, I threatened Gideon that I'm going to attempt to channel Edison Carter, which is going to be mental. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Okay. Um, and <laughs> uh, and and of course, uh, R- Rob will be attending the Green Cloaks event four, which is on the tenth to twelfth of August at Broadstone. You know, you're you're a fight. So yeah, being my first Green Cloaks event. Yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah. That's Sounds good though. You, you, uh, I, I think you'd be interested in that one, James. It's uh, set in the future. Uh, there are swords and there are shields and there's plate armor and things like that, but there's also nerf guns. Cool. 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 Yeah, and it's, uh, like yeah, warring, warring colonies and warring factions across a section of the galaxy. Big yeah. sort yeah. of space opera action game. Yeah. No, no beards required. I still <laughs> Sorry, haven't Tom. played a good like high sci-fi game, yeah. and so I'm in the market for a good one mm. yeah yeah it, it was, <laughs> will... are you whoring yourself out for that kind of <laughs> no i'm just saying I'm you know like, market, let me know I'm what the good games are in its early 20s yeah. rob, 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 rob. Yeah. in the park yeah rob um isn't yeah. isn't matthew doing cyberpunk one Oh yeah, now Matthew Irwin Austin. After he's in part, no, he's I could kill him. I, I don't know, sorry, Matthew, I love you. Yeah, <laughs> but, yeah. uh, he's do he's apparently in, in negotiation with Talzorian to do a cyberpunk game in the in the in the in the future in the ethos and the style of the Talzorian cyberpunk games. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so I mean, that's that's that based, that's coming from the old cyberpunk RPG tabletop and also the new cyberpunk 2077 uh, video game. game yeah. out. What do you do at a cyberpunk LARP though? Do you just like sit around on computers and hack? Like, what do you? Oh, you know, I think there'll be a lot of action in these. There'll be a lot <laughs> oh, of action. Yeah? Cool. Uh, a lot of action. Cool. I I know Matthew. Matthew's a little bit of a tech genius, so there will be hacking. I can guarantee that. Cool. There will be hardware. Yeah. Matthew's a really good programmer and maker, so there's going to be hacking and stuff going on. But uh, a cyberpunk game, it, it's like action and action adventure and hacking and oh, gunplay yeah. and seediness and bars and. 
So you don't want good. to be yeah. in your group then, because I Great. can't even turn on my computer, let alone try and hack something. <laughs> and I have problems with the bloody printer. There's never. Yeah. We need to hack through this game over. Then let's all go because uh, <laughs> no one is going to be able to do it. Yeah. Nah, you just play the muscle, man. You yeah. just go. That's yeah, your job, nerd. Yeah. Yeah. Do I look big enough? Oh, thanks, buddy. <laughs> 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 Come in as the muscle. <laughs> oh, love you. Oh. It's just because the uh, computer just makes me look bigger and everything. Well, <laughs> stop it. Go on. <laughs> yeah, I've 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 squished mine in. Yeah. So oh, okay. Who's a bit of weight? Okay. <laughs> Tom's already stood up. Yeah. <laughs> just a... checking you're listening. That's all it is. A... In he's fact, a... Tom and I haven't been to a role play against each other. The last time we fought, I did the ape on him, oh, and wow. um, yeah, that was, that was it. And there's there's a special move that I only reserve for Tom. I only ever do it for Tom, yeah. just to kind of put him off. I'm not going to ask you to to do it. Because I know you reserve it for him, but could you give me a show? Maybe give me a taste of what that's oh, like. Oh yeah, no, uh, <laughs> um, just hard it's, no. It's, it's it's only for Tom, and you'd have to go to an event. But I I only do it for Tom. That's all it is. But every yeah, single time, if I do it, game. I know that that shield wall's gonna crumble. <laughs> Yeah. You, you're, you're, you're getting that on YouTube, Stu. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, not a problem, yeah. not a problem. And don't forget, we actually invented cuddle damage because we were bored as well. We did. Mm, oh, cuddle damage. damage. Yeah. Terrifying. Yeah. The cuddle Terrific. damage? The monsters yeah. just cuddled. Yeah. Uh, there, was, there, was, there was a sequence in one event where the monsters decided to cuddle the players, and then the players decided that must be hurting them, so actually took, play, took character damage of, the, of their own volition. No, we... See, we, we we just wanted to cuddle. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just lonely monsters just want to. Totally well. Everyone just wants to kill you. Some yeah. once in a while you just like a hug. Yeah. Yeah. That's all you need. <laughs> all you need is hugs. Monsters hugs. get a bad rep. Wah, 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 I think they do as well. Yeah. 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 You just, I mean, it's fine opening a six pack of whoop ass on him. But, you know. <laughs> six pack of whoop ass. Uh, I actually did that. If, if I don't, did I go tell you I had a, a can of beers? And it was in a six pack, and I called them whoop ass. So that's what I was going to do. I was going to open a six pack of whoop ass, but what I was actually saying is, I want to have a drink. (laughs) Yep. I mean, something else here. (laughs) Uh, In in America, what does it mean over there? Well, it means you're going to do some mass whooping, right? You don't open it unless you're ready to do it. Yeah. Yeah. But But that's the joke. So you yeah. say, See, I'm going to open up a can of whoop ass. to you again, and this is just not even funny now. That's the just sec- trying to help. Second strike, yeah. there's only yeah. three. <laughs> but you actually have a can called whoop ass. So, whoop when, ass. They go, yeah, yeah. so when they go, <gasps> you go, there we go. <laughs> yeah, every, every U.S. citizen has their own personal can. <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I'm amazed right now. I think I've lost the sweepstake. Um yeah, you have. How, if we all how have, long, <laughs> how long it, it takes Luke to ask about Trump? Um, it's been a long you, time. You said, you said, don't bring it up. You'll feel uncomfortable, and I've had to try I really hard. I expected it sooner myself. Yeah. Well, I'll be honest with you. There just hasn't been an opportune my, uh, time for it. But when there is, boy, I'm going to wade in. <laughs> I'll get you. <laughs> So this is that so go ahead. Well, I, no, I don't want to do. I don't want to talk about Trump and Scotland and the comments he made about independence because it, it was just <laughs> it's inflammatory, and you know, and it, and it would make him sound like an absolute. Well, I don't want to say what someone actually wrote about him, but Stuart now is that's his key phrase. <laughs> yeah, it's, I, uh, it's, it's I've basically... seen the tweets. Yeah. Um, what it's... I might do is write it on the Facebook, but uh... it does it does involve a flannel. That's yeah. Uh... <laughs> it sounds like bank. Yeah. Bank flannel. Bank flannel. Look, man, we're not happy either. You know, <laughs> <laughs> we're not stoked on that. I yeah. just want to say, just right here and now, though, I did not start this. Yeah. No. Yeah. Stuart I... started it. I don't want to grass. <laughs> if you do. <laughs> Look, it's a running theme with myself and Luke, anyway, and everywhere and anywhere that we go. I start shit. He has to finish it, <laughs> or he or, 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 or I take the blame. He gets blamed. That's yeah. why he's done that before. Oh yeah, many Stitched times. Stitched me up many, many times. Sat there holding the baby. Everybody needs a hobby. Anyway, at least you guys have a system. 
Exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And I, it works, I'll be honest. I get away Sorry, with yes, everything. Did. Right. Um, so I think that's probably about it, guys, to be honest with you. Um, so, I mean, thanks, James. That's, it's been an absolute blast talking to you. Yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I was nervous before I got on, but you guys are all real cool. Thanks for having me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I could tell with the with what you were typing. I was like, no, it's, it's just cool, honest. You know, we, we yeah. know, you should, any... You, you you talk to anybody that we've interviewed and they've all gone like I want to do that again. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. And we're going. Why? Why would you want to put yeah. us through that? Again? Why? <laughs> so there we go. Elon has just said, "Stop explaining jokes." <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Stop having Americans online. Can we not actually look at anyone else? Oh. oh. <laughs> what was the time? <laughs> Who won? Who won that one? Who won that one? I think we all lost that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> all I had five quid on forty minutes. That's all I was betting against oh, myself. So yeah, you know, yeah, it's 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 way over that, right? Wow. <laughs> so uh, it's just like right a, a massive thank you again to James. Uh, superb. Go and check out all of his stuff uh, basically over on on Facebook and and what have you. For, uh, just search for just search for good enough films and I think you'll find just about everything. The only thing you won't find on Kickstarter by searching good enough films, I know, I tried, uh, is the yeah. American with no a, just the American wasteland. American. Yeah, and and help them out. Two days left. Go help out. Get some more stretch mm. goals and we'll yeah. get some more cool stuff in. Um, so. I've always got to say a massive thank you to our lovely patrons who make it a bit easier to keep this show going. Now, if you'd like to get in contact with the show, just email contact us at laughbook.com. If there's a topic you'd like us to discuss or something cool you saw or fancy writing an article for the website, then email the show contact us at laughbook.com. Um, now the, the the new theme music, by the way, I didn't even mention it throughout the show. Uh, does you everybody could. like the new theme music, by the way? Um, no, <laughs> yeah, of course you don't. Yeah, um, I didn't know it was new, but I'm into it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's good. So, the, oh, typical one, arse licker. <laughs> the the theme music was written by Bradley Parsons, so you can find him over at Fiverr.com forward slash Bradley Parsons. Uh, very, very nice blog to deal with. So, uh, yeah. and he, he did a, a, a bang up job for us. He did a two versions, in fact, uh, that he eventually said, yeah, use both. That's fine. Uh, <laughs> Uh, so a massive thanks to Bradley for that. Um, if you want to have a little, you know, want to help us out, <coughs> go across to Patreon. Uh, just search for Laugh Book. Uh, just a dollar a month, you know, makes this a little bit easier to put on because right now it all comes out of our own pockets. Um, if you want to get something like a nice swanky mug or what have you, you know, just saying it's delicious uh, tasting stuff out of it, uh, you can pop across to, to Facebook and have a look at the shop there there's lots of stuff we'll be putting more stuff all the time and we're looking into another supply as well for different stuff so uh, keep tuned for that you can obviously listen to the podcast on itunes stitcher youtube uh, twitch when i remember to put it up on twitch uh, and laugh book media just just, just search for laugh book you will find us uh, obviously the website laughbook.com news reviews all the good stuff there uh, you can follow us obviously on facebook twitter just search for Laugh Book. And, of course, we are over on Instagram now under The Laugh Book. It's not a bone of contention for me, but it is. Uh, <laughs> can't have just Laugh Book. Uh, don't forget to give us a five-star review on whatever podcatcher you use if you think it's worth five stars. But it would help us out a lot. It's, it costs you nothing. Just hit five yeah, stars. Yeah, it's, it's just five. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, and show notes. Uh, show notes, of course, can be found over at laughbook.com. And the shows can be found over at laughbookme.com media.com uh that's the new one that we've got as well uh so it's just calls for me now to say thank you very much to james thank you to luke thank you to tom thank you to rob and that's me Stuart edwards signing out have a good night everybody bye-bye bye-bye